So, yeah, I just want to, to welcome you all um, and thank you for joining us this morning. This is the first webinar um, on our Green Enterprise Programme this year. And before we kick off, I just wanted to say a couple of words just to put the Green Enterprise Programme into the context of our Circular Economy Programme, which was launched last year. And um, so only very briefly to say a couple of words and um, that program is as I mentioned it was, it was launched last year and um, it's built on four pillars um, and those four pillars are uh, advocacy and data you can see them there on the screen delivering through partnerships because there's such a lot of work to do over such a wide range of areas and um, it's partnership is really really important to us um, innovation and demonstration, and that's where green enterprise falls, and then regulation. So they, those are our four areas within which we work. And then we have seven, seven priority areas that you can see here on the screen. Um, so we have packaging, plastics, textiles, food, water, nutrients, construction buildings, electronics and ICT and batteries and vehicles. So you can see it's a very wide ranging program of work. I just wanted to say that because it's such a big program of work, such a wide program of work, obviously collaborating is really important. So that's why, um, you know, we're, we're, we're really delighted to be partnering with the two businesses that you'll be hearing from this morning. And a big part of the work we're doing as well is communicating what we found. So, so that's what this morning is about. And um, so without further ado, um, yeah, just to let you know, you'll be hearing from two businesses this morning from Returner Ireland, from David Whitebrecht. I, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, David. Um, close enough. <laughs> close enough. Okay. Um, sorry about that. It was not quite there. And then Adrian Doyle from Paltech will also speak to us. So I'll hand over now uh, to David, who will tell us about the return or uh, deposit return system that, that his company had been working on. Well, hello everyone. My name is David Bybrecht, uh, here to present our EPA Green Enterprise project, which covered the research, development and implementation of a deposit return system for reusable containers in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, so, do you buy takeaway food? John does. It's just one piece of packaging, right? Every year in Ireland, an estimated 138 million pieces of single-use packaging are disposed of as well as 200 million single-use coffee cups. So this sets out the scale of the challenge in the sector and what we hope to impact with this project. Um, so we kick off with some of our design, uh, design decisions, um, particularly our material and container choice. Probably one of the most important considerations given the circular focus of this initiative. For, our, for the material, we had four main choices, bamboo, glass, plastic, and stainless steel. Each has their own pros and cons. For example, glass, very hygienic and aesthetic, but not so good in a retail environment because if, it, uh, if you drop it, it cracks. Bamboo, again, a nice material, cheap. However, it can't be recycled or composted, so that was a no from us. Uh, we have plastic, which is highly durable. Uh, quite cheap, middle and low carbon impact. Uh, the downside being that it can only be downcycled five to seven times before we can no longer use it. And our fourth option was stainless steel. Uh, looks good, retains heat longer. But the downside being that it does have a higher carbon uh, footprint on the initial manufacturing. So we narrowed down our product selection to the plastic and stainless steel and demoed these to our early adopters of the system, our cafes. Uh, the feedback was the same from most outlets we spoke to. They didn't want to use a plastic product for an environmental initiative and viewed stainless steel as the industry standard for food grade products. So they're used to working with it. Uh, so we were happy to go with the stainless steel product as it was made from 75% recycled material it's long lasting, durable, and can be easy and infinitely recycled in most countries and is a sought after resource. Um, so size, uh, another important consideration. Uh, two sizes were selected, a one liter bowl and a 700 milliliter canister. I suppose our thinking behind these sizes was to cover off as much of the menu as possible with as few products as possible. So, for example, the one liter bowl covers most lunchtime takeaway products from salads to curries. The 700 milliliter canister is great for soups and for the smaller sides and dishes. Uh, 
So next we have our lid. So after researching our lid options, we offer for a dual approach. We offer a disposable lid made from cardboard, which can be recycled or composted. In tandem, we have a reusable Triton lid, which is designed for multi-use. The disposable lids are given to the end customer free of charge and are used as a mechanism to entice users to the system. Once they're using the system, the reusable system or the reusable lid is offered for sale to the customer to engage them to switch to a reuse model. The reusable lid also forms a better seal and retains heat or coolness longer. Uh, next, we have our deposit and tracking technology and our thinking and decisions around that. So a lot of thought went into deciding the deposit amount. We had to balance the consideration of it not being too low that the products were viewed as disposable, while ensure it wouldn't be too high so as to not be accessible to the general public. Uh, if, the, if the deposit is too low, um, the product won't be valued. It'll become a throwaway or disposable item and likely end up in the residual waste stream whereas a higher deposit does act as a barrier to entry. We also have to consider the deposit amount versus the cost of producing the product to ensure this initiative was financially viable. So a value between four to seven euros satisfies that criteria. This was following these decisions. Uh, we use a six euro deposit and that stayed the same kind of the last year. Um, so tracking, um, I suppose, initially we planned on developing a tracking system to track reuse metrics, so how much a container was used, um, how often it was used, there could have potentially been a wealth of information there. Uh, but we decided against it due to a number of factors. Uh, it would be extremely difficult and costly to develop and maintain an app, as, we, uh, as would be buying an international solution. Partner businesses were hesitant to introduce any new technology into their premises, particularly the risk of breaking during a busy period uh, when they're trying to get as much volume out through the door. So we decided against the technology dis uh, solution and left it up to partner businesses to program the deposit return aspect of the system into their own point of sale system, which has worked quite well. Uh, we're still open to the idea of a tech-based solution. Uh, perhaps in the future, a new seamless tracking solution may do develop, which is low cost and frictionless, and we're always on the lookout for that. Um, hygiene, yep. even before COVID, hygiene was one of our key concerns and areas of research uh, from looking at other systems. It was, it was always on our agenda. So two options were available to tick off the box here. We could link up with a third party outsourcing cleaning partner, say to collect the containers, clean them and return them to the outlets. The other option was to enlist the outlets themselves to use their on-site facilities to clean the products. Uh, the outsource option was prohibitively expensive and doesn't really exist in Ireland. So we opted to work with the outlets using their existing facilities. So we hired a consultant to create the necessary HACCP document, which details the procedures and actions to take in terms of handling ingoing and outgoing containers. Uh, following, sorry, cafes following this document ensures that the outlet are fully compliant with the Food Safety of, uh, Authority of Ireland's hygiene standards, just the, the FSAI as they're commonly known as. So washing the containers between use and swapping a used container for a new clean one guarantees the container is clean and hygienic. Uh, a copy of the hazard policy is given to each partner location. Additionally, all products are covered by product liability insurance in the unlikely event of an incident. So that was kind of our main design choices um, before we actually went and uh, implemented our new solution. So this is what I suppose our new customer journey looks like when ordering their food. So let's walk John uh, through our new solution. So John orders his food from his favorite lunchtime takeaway but with one key difference, the food is packaged in a returner rather than single use packaging. John places a deposit on the container and enjoys his food. When finished, the empty containers are returned to any branch in the network for a refill or his deposit back. Containers are dishwashered in store, ready for reuse. So 
So we launched it in roughly four locations and have expanded to around 20 locations across the country using our deposit return system with a mix of food bowls, cups, and canisters. Uh, so our next section is going to cover, uh, cover our learnings from running the system and some of our key observations and kind of recommendations and suggestions if people were to implement a system uh, elsewhere. Uh, timing. As you can imagine, launching in the middle of the pandemic was not ideal. And in terms of a startup, timing is one of the three most important ingredients in determining the success of a business. So we originally planned to launch in April 2020, but pushed back to December 2020 and have been operational since. So just over a year, maybe a year and a half. Uh, we recommend not launching it during the pandemic and sticking to when there's a large appetite for reuse and when there's momentum. Uh, as closely as possible, we followed the EAST framework of behavioral change. That's making a choice easy, attractive, social, and timely. This framework was used to guide our decision-making on how to increase adoption, uh, which covered in other sections. Uh, deposit amount. This proved to be a barrier to adoption. A six-year deposit was used with a free cardboard lid or reusable Triton lid, available purchase one off at 785. This would potentially add an extra nearly 14 euro onto the cost of a takeaway lunch. Uh, individual consumers initially viewed the deposit as a cost, which created a negative perception and acted as a barrier to adoption. With further explanation and prompts, this perception was changed to ensure the consumer understood it was a fully respond uh, refundable deposit and not a cost. Uh, we focus our attention on ensuring that point. Ideally, the deposit would be lower while maintaining the quality of the product we have. Uh, so we have, um, yeah, yeah, so let's talk about, about social media, both paid and organic social media used to launch and promote this initiative. So as you know, social media is a great and low cost tool to reach a specific target market. The project benefited from a number of other environmental groups and pages sharing some of our posts across their, their channels, which increased reach and engagement. The goal of our online presence is to increase awareness, increase adoption, and attract new business and customers to the initiative. Partner businesses also shared material through their own channels, which helped to increase reach. So roughly 50% of our inbound queries and messages came by Instagram, uh, which highlights its reach and effectiveness as a communication tool. Uh, so we have a point of sales uh, stand there, uh, which was uh, which we provided to partner businesses. Uh, we noted that the ideal location for these display stands was at the point of order at eye level, the location where the ind uh, individual consumer placed their say food order. While locating the display stands in other areas of the outlet was helpful, it was not as impactful. And this combined with a customer prompt made it timely and easier to promote the initiative to an individual uh, consumer. So this kind of ties in with staff prompts. So a guidelines and checklist single page document uh, proved very useful to staff and it provided them a quick overview of how to manage the system, address frequently asked questions, uh, had a list of prompts and other checklists. So this document contained a sample prompt for an individual consumers. So staff who prompted individual consumers with a simple question such as, would you like it in a returner, had a higher rate of adoption. This question would be followed up with a short explanation of what returner is. The rationale was to make it as easy as possible for the consumer to adopt the system by promoting them when they're most likely to be receptive to it. This would help individual consumers plan their response to events and close the gap between intentions and behaviors. So we recommend timely consumer prompts as a method of increasing adoption and reinforcing the desired consumer behavior. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have a couple of four big sections here. Uh, first, to talk about the materials. Uh, both partner businesses and individual consumers were impressed and happy to use the twin wall stainless steel containers. Businesses reported them as being sturdy, robust, and visually uh, pleasing. 
All stakeholders were pleased with the container's ability to retain heat longer by virtue of its twin wall design, which also ensured hands were not burned uh, with heat transmission. Stainless steel was viewed as environmentally friendly and has a high circularity, circular material, or sorry, is a highly circular material due to the ability to 100% recycle it and the material uh, using in existing infrastructure. Uh, the 70% recycle content was well received and acknowledged by businesses and individual consumers. Uh, so the, uh, the sizes, the chosen containers suited a large proportion of the menu items of the partner businesses as expected. However, they did not cover the entire menu. The one, the, the one eater bowl was more popular and more commonly used. I think in the long term, a larger and more comprehensive range of containers would be required to ensure a larger proportion of the takeaway menu is covered with reused solutions. The container was not suited to certain dishes, which had a number of, say, sides and had to be kept separate from the main dish. So think like your curry and your rice, you might want it separate. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the lid system. So the cardboard lid was offered free of choice to the consumer, with the reusable lid was sold at around eight euro. Lids were used and owned by the consumer rather than being included in the deposit value. This proved quite successful as there were a large number of consumers who did, not, who did not want to purchase a reusable lid on their first go. The cardboard lid enabled them to try the reusable food container before switching to a reusable lid. The disposable lid also proved useful when individual consumers had forgotten their reusable lid but still wanted one on their container. Uh, by keeping the lid separate, businesses were able to avoid situations where a consumer returned a container with no lid. This would possibly cause confusion and a disagreement between staff and the consumer, which is to be avoided. So we recommend using both a disposable and a reusable lid. Uh, on the hygiene front, all partner businesses were mandated to follow the HACCP procedures and clean containers between use with a dishwasher. This proved very successful. It did, however, isolate a small number of interested businesses in participating as they did not have the necessary cleaning facilities. These businesses were encouraged to investigate uh, the necessary cleaning facilities and equipment while highlighting the hygiene and time-saving benefits the equipment would uh, provide. Uh, incentives. Uh, so while a large number of uh, users chose to purchase their food in a reusable container because of the environmental impact. Some individual consumers were enticed by a discount on their food. The discount helped increase adoption, but not to the extent as originally expected. We are of the opinion that a levy or disincentives also needed in order to significantly increase adoption and reuse rates. Uh, we think that without a levy or disincentive, uh, a high level of system change and adoption won't be reached. While there are a limited number of use cases where single-use food packaging is required, in the majority of situations it can be replaced with reusable solutions, which a government-imposed levy would help achieve. Uh, so we recommend an incentive for individual consumers choosing to reuse and a disincentive in the form of a levy for individual consumers selecting single-use packaging. Uh, so I'd like to thank everyone for listening today and I suppose I would like to specifically thank the EPA and their Green Enterprise Programme who uh, largely funded this project and took us from zero to one with their support both financially and educationally and with contacts. Um, uh, we're unsure if the project would have went ahead without their support so uh, this, I suppose a testament to the programme and the impact it has on actually bringing a, an idea from theory to reality. So thank you to everyone on the EPA Green Enterprise team for their support throughout the project. Thank you, David. Really such an interesting presentation. And um, I'll certainly be, look, be looking out for it. I'm following you on Instagram now. So I'd be I'd be uh, delighted to, I think it's a wonderful, a wonderful product um, and service. Um, so we'll hand over now to Adrian from Paltech. Um, and thank you, David. Um, so to, to hear about your work with recyclable plastic. Thanks. Uh... So as Stephanie said, uh, my name is Adrian Doyle. I'm the R&D Director of Paltech and I'll be presenting our green enterprise project called uh, Single Use Plastic Packaging Remolded into Pallets. 
So this project is a collaboration between ourselves, Altec. Uh, we we're a company set up three years ago to develop and commercialize products manufactured from post-consumer plastic using our own innovative and patented technology. Um, we have partnered with Green Generation for this project. So they operate a, an anaerobic digestion facility in Kildare and they convert uh, food waste into renewable gas and electricity. And they're also the only direct injection facility in the country where they can inject their own biogas directly into the, the gas network. Um, also then we're working with TUS, Technological University of the Shannon, and they contribute to the project with their expertise in polymer processing and also in material characterization. So if we start and we look at the, the challenges for plastic recycling in Ireland, so there's around 319,000 tonnes of plastic packaging generated in Ireland each year. And of this, we're only recycling about 28%. The European Commission has set targets that we should be re recycling 50% of all this plastic packaging by 2025 and up to 55% by 2030. So if we're currently recycling 89,000 tonnes, we need to recycle an additional, additional 86,000 tonnes by 2030 to meet our targets. So we have a lot of work to do to achieve these targets and, and uh, we nearly need to double the amount of plastic we're recycling um, in, in the coming years to achieve these targets. And also, if you look at this 28% of plastic that is recycled, we're only actually recycling 6% of this um, in Ireland, and, and the rest goes to uh, other EU countries or, or goes outside the EU. So we're really relying on other countries to do our recycling for us. And um, the reality is when, when we send this plastic outside the country, um, we don't really know what happens to it and, and how much of it is actually recycled. And when we send this plastic away, we also we, we lose the value or we, we lose this resource that's been sent out to another country. Um, another thing is when we started this project, um, it, it wasn't possible to uh, recycle soft plastic, so they weren't included in the recycling system. Now, this has actually changed since uh, September last year. So now you can put your soft plastics into the recycling bin, but there is still some challenges there on, on how to recycle these soft plastics. So um, a, a lot of plastic packaging comes from food packaging, um, and these are some of the most difficult plastics to recycle. Um, a lot of the food packaging is made up of multi-layers um, with various different types and grades of plastic, and this is used to help preserve the food by and extend the food life um, by stopping the air uh, getting at the food, but it does make it more difficult then to recycle them. There's also a lot of foils like aluminium used uh, for the same reason. Um, there's adhesives used for resealing packaging. Um, and also there's a lot of inks and uh, labels used uh, for, for branding and information purposes uh, on, on food packaging. Um, and also because it's it's food packaging, uh, the plastic is in direct contact with the plast with the food and, and this means that the, the plastics are, are highly contaminated. So all these reasons make it uh, very difficult to, to recycle food packaging and, and even more difficult to recycle food packaging and plastic packaging back into food packaging again. So uh, just looking at the, our objectives uh, for the project, so um, we want to optimize our own process, um, our EPM process. Uh, then we'll um, design um, and, and manufacture prototype pallets and, and test them. And uh, finally, then we want to communicate the findings of the project. So this slide here shows our vision for the project and how food packaging can be recycled back into new products. Um, the process will start with uh, food waste being taken in at green generation. Um, green generation then will separate the plastic packaging from the food. The food goes on to generate biogas. The plastic packaging then is washed and, and prepared for processing. Uh, that produces this mixed plastic flake. And this then can be used uh, by Paltech to manufacture new products uh, like the recycled uh, plastic pallet. Uh, 
and uh, TUS then support the project um, through R&D and material testing. So looking at uh, what's a, a typical uh, recycling process used in the industry. So plastics are collected. Um, the first stage then is to sort the plastics into the, diff into the various different types. Uh, the plastics are then shredded or granulated to reduce the size. Um, next then they go on to a washing and drying process. After that then they are um, extruded to produce pellets. And uh, these pellets then can be used by molders to manufacture new products. So with our process, uh, we can remove four of these steps. So we can go from the collection, we can skip the sorting process and go straight to washing uh, and then drying. And then this produces the mixed plastic flake and this can be used uh, by us to, to manufacture new products directly. Moving on then to the development in the project and what we've learned. Um, so from a very early stage, we saw that uh, the material preparation uh, was vital to the process. So as the plastic um, is in contact with food, it, it's highly contaminated and, and required a lot of cleaning. And it also required a, a lot of equipment um, to be able to process the different plastic types, so the, the, the mixtures of soft and soft and hard plastic and, and different types of plastic. So there had to be a lot of upgrades to equipment um, to get the plastic flake to the requirement, the required specification for us to be able to use it. So at Paltech then, uh, we worked on optimizing our process for food packaging. Um, when this was completed, then we moved on to manufacturing uh, test laminates using the mixed flake, and uh, we did uh, material characterization testing, mechanical testing, and also fire testing. So some of the results are presented here for flexure testing, and uh, the properties we got were um, comparable to properties of uh, low density polyethylene, and that was a good uh, result for the project. So then we moved on to the design of a pallet. Um, we started by reviewing uh, existing plastic pallets on the market manufactured from, from virgin plastic. Um, we were also in contact with some Irish companies that were interested in a recycled plastic pallet. Um, we then started to look at the design of a, a pallet uh, that would suit our own process and materials. And we came up with a, a number of different concepts uh, some of them were single molding, some of them required uh, assembly of, of various parts to produce a pallet. Um, for this project then we, we down selected this uh, nine leg um, pallet, uh, 1.2 meter by one meter. Um, and this would be used for the prototyping. So then we moved on to the design of a mold. Uh, we outsourced then the fabrication of the mold. And uh, when the mold uh, was ready, then we integrated it into our process um, so that we could start <clears throat> the development trials and, and start manufacturing the first prototypes. So the, the first pallet, um, the, the base was 40 millimeters thick, and uh, we achieved a, a density of 800 kgs per meter cubed. And this gives a pallet weight of 60 kgs. So the density we achieved was higher than we expected initially. So in turn, we got a, a higher weight pallet and uh, typical pallets on the market might be plastic pallets might be between 27 and 35 kgs. So we had to look at redesigning the base to, to try and reduce weight. So we, as a second iteration, we redesigned the mold and, and we moved from a 40 millimeter thick uh, base down to a 25 millimeter. This uh, brought the, the weight down to 50 kgs, which was still on the high side. Um, so you can see the various pictures of the pallet there. Um, and on the, the bottom right there, you can see a, a cross section cut through the, the pallet. So you can see that the uh, quite high density that was achieved. So finally, looking at the, the next steps and some of the progress since the project has ended. So on the pallet, the, the weight is still on the high side, as I said, so we need to take more weight out. So we 
we're looking at uh, uh, further reducing the, the base thickness. Um, this will help to, to reduce or remove weight. Um, also, we're looking at the, the legs, so the nine legs at the, at the moment are solid, so we're looking at redesigning the mould so that these will be hollow and this will help to, to further reduce the weight. Um, so we'll, we'll conti continue to develop the pallet um, and, and get to a stage where we're ready to, to test the pallet to the requirements. Um, since we started the project then, we've been working closely with Tesco and Green Generation to develop a commercial output for this technology. So Tesco are now supplying uh, Green Generation with all their waste food. And this waste food comes into Green Generation facility in Kildare. Um, the packaging is separated and the food goes on to the digester to generate biogas. And the biogas then is injected directly into the gas grid. So Tesco then can use this gas to heat some of their stores. Plastic packaging then is shredded and prepared for molding. And you'll see here, we're, we're, we've started to manufacture these uh, planter pots. Each planter pot weighs seven kgs, and they've just been launched in Tesco stores. So Tesco's own plastic food packaging is being recycled back into new products for Tesco customers. Um, also, uh, for the soft plastics, uh, as you couldn't uh, recycle soft plastics at home, um, in previous years we, we worked with Tesco to develop this uh, recycling bin that you can see in the top right corner. So we manufactured the panels for this uh, recycling unit using uh, uh, recycled plastic and it's helping to raise awareness and promote plastic recycling. So. Customers uh, could place their soft plastics into these units and, and again the soft plastic then can be used to manufacture products like the planter pots. So this is an example of how the technology developed here in, in this green enterprise project has been applied to recycling of plastics in Ireland and we expect to be able to recycle 400 tonnes of this plastic uh, this year alone. So that's it. Um, thanks for your attention. And again, uh, thanks for EPA uh, for the support. And, and uh, we're delighted to be able to demonstrate here how, how this technology um, has been commercialized and, and is able to help uh, to increase the recycling rates in Ireland. Thanks. Thanks very much, Adrian. That's really a uh, great presentation and um, a super work that you're doing.